Thanks for joining this webinar, our last one for 2021 on EFT processing. My name is Natalie from ORCID and today Anne and I will go through some new features in EFT processing. We will take this opportunity to demonstrate and provide tips to set up and use the features that are less commonly used and have had some recent improvements. This is what we're going to cover. First, in line with the recent release of version 2022, we will um, discuss the changes to the uh, installed program, which doesn't prompt for a license anymore, and uh, go through the changes to the help, including the release of the online help for all ORCID modules. We will then summarize some upgrade tips the web screen was the big new features of um, 2021, so we will summarize the setup and show the new reports released since the initial release of the web screens earlier this year. With the release of version 22, we introduced three new features in um, version 2019 and above of EFT processing. Security in EFT, the ability to control who can recreate the EFT file. New option on clearing banks, so we will take this opportunity to discuss how to set up and use clearing bank in EFT processing. Similarly, with uh, SFTP, which is becoming more and more common for users of EFT processing, we now have the ability to test the connection and we will demonstrate how to use SFTP in EFT processing. We will then discuss email setup in, um, in EFT as it is one of the most common support questions. In particular, the latest versions now support a longer password in EFT email, which makes it easier to support MFA and app password. So we will discuss how to set that up. Finally, we will um, touch on using EFT processing with other ORCID modules, namely document management link and extender. We will start with installing EFT processing as there has been a change in all supported versions since October 2021. With versions 2019 and above, you don't enter the serial number and activation codes when installing EFT processing. And this actually applies to all ORCID modules. This should simplify installing product updates and dealing with system manager company name changes. This also means that you don't generate the 30-day trial code when installing. The steps are now to download and install the programs, activate in Sage 300 in one company, and then go to the EFT license screen to enter the codes that you have, if you have the codes, or generate a 30-day trial code. And this is what we are now going to look at. To download ORCID's products, go to orchid.systems and then log in using your user ID and password to the website and then select product downloads. On the product downloads page, select the appropriate version that you want and then you will see the object model for that version, the NFR serial numbers for that version, plus all the modules. So download the NFR serial numbers, because these can be used to activate for 30 days if you need to, and then download the module that you need. In this example, EFT processing. And once you have downloaded the files, you can run the install shield, in this case EFT Processing version 2022. Accept the terms and conditions. Ensure that the programs directory is correct and accept the warning about running web screens. After installing the programs, 
you need to connect to Sage 300 and activate EFT in the required company. And then you'll be able to enter your serial number and activation code or the NFR serial number if you are wanting to activate for 30 days. So connecting through to Sample Company Limited, I'm going to activate EFT processing. And now we get a warning that there's no license yet found for EFT processing. So we go to EFT processing, EFT setup to the license screen. And here we can key in the serial number and activation code if you have it, or the NFR serial number if you want to activate for 30 days. So we're going to use the subscription NFR serial number and paste it in to the EFT license screen in order to activate for 30 days. And we'll get a warning to say we need to close and reopen the desktop to see the icons. And here we see our 30 day subscription. And when we reopen the desktop, first we'll get a warning that our subscription is going to expire in the next 30 days. And then we'll be able to see all the EFT icons. And just a little reminder, all your serial numbers and activation codes are on the partner portal. And also you can click F1 on any of the screens for more help, for example, on the license screen. And also we have our online help as well, which has more information on EFT processing, including training videos and tips and trick videos. And if you have used the NFR serial number for a 30 day trial license, you can always come later and rekey the real serial number and activation code to get the client's serial number and activation code installed. So we've looked at the changes to the installation and to the license screen in uh, EFT processing and um, same thing in uh, all ORCID modules. We're now going to look at upgrade tips. So for that, I will hand over to Anne. When upgrading from one version of EFT processing to another, for example, going from version 2021 to version 2022, after installing the 2022 programs and activating EFT processing 2022 in the appropriate company, you would go to the associated license screen and key in the serial number and activation code that you have been issued. And then for your customizations, for example, for your custom remittance advices or your user formats, if you are running with your own user formats, if you are using customization directories, in this case, we're using a customization directory, C ORCID custom directories. What you need to do is copy your customized remittance advices and user formats from your 68A directory to your 69A directory. If you are not using customization directories, you will find the user formats in the Sage programs directory in the relevant EFT version, EL69A, and you will find the customized remittance advices in the ENG or associated language directory for customized reports. Thank you, Anne. And a reminder that all these tips are available on the EFT processing help and also that your activation codes are available on the ORCID admin partner portal. Next, let's look at the web screens. One of the major new features in EFT processing this year was the release of the web screens for Sage 300 versions 2021 and 2022. To enable the web screens for EFT processing, you need to have an EFT subscription license you need to install and activate Extender Product Update 10 for the version of Sage 300 you're running, 2021 or 2022. 
the web screens are only available for Sage 300 2021 and above. Since the initial release, we released a few additional reports in uh, October 2021, and that's the audit log reports, the receipt batch audit report, and the update invoice due date report. There is a separate video available on the ORCID website, and the help includes the detailed steps and a few tips on um, how to configure EFT processing to be optimized on the on the web screens. I think this is in here. In many cases, when you're using the web screens for EFT, you would configure your EFT bank to either download the file on a local machine or use SFTP. In May 2021, we released our EFT web screens, the first round of screens with version 2021. And with the release of 2022, we have added some additional reports and these also are available in version 2021. This video is just a recap of our web screens. Please see our website for a more detailed guide on how to install and use our EFT web screens. In order to have access to the EFT web screens, you need to be running on a subscription license. And you need to have Extender activated in that company. You don't need a license for Extender, but you do need to have it activated in the required company to get EFT web screens. And then once you connect to the appropriate company, you will see the EFT menu with all the released screens. In periodic processing, we have delete and active records. In EFT setup, we have options, banks, customers, vendors, and email messages with all the same functionality as you see on the desktop screen. These setup reports are new, released with version 2022 and 2021 in October. And so too is the audit log report the receipt batch audit log report and the update invoice due date audit report. And create EFT file was in the original release. And after creating the EFT file, you can, of course, print or email the remittance advice. So now I'm going to hand over back to Anne to um, look at the new features that were released in October this year in version 2022, as well as the three supported versions. Over to you, Anne. I'm now going to demonstrate the new features released in October 2022. And these features were released in all our currently supported products, version 2019, 2020, 21, and 2022. The first feature is a new security option, recreate EFT file. When an EFT file is created for a batch, it is logged in the audit log. And prior to this new feature being implemented, if the file was recreated, the operator was just prompted or given a warning message that the file is being recreated. But now you can use the security option to allow some users to recreate a file and other users not. In administration services in the security groups, under EFT processing, there's this new security group to recreate the EFT file. So if you are given this security option, then you are able to recreate an EFT file just accepting the warning message. But if you are not given this particular option, then you will not be able to recreate an EFT file. And Anne has been assigned to this no create security group. So logging into this company as administrator or a user who is able to recreate an EFT file. If 
they go to create an EFT file for a batch that has already been exported. They will get this warning message, the batch has already been exported, and they have the option to recreate the file. But logging in as Anne, I will get an error message that I cannot recreate this file. The next new feature we're going to look at is the Test Upload button, which allows you to upload a test file to the SFTP site. For a number of years now, we've had the ability to SFTP the EFT file, either using a user ID and password or a user ID and a key file to upload the file to the SFTP site. But the only way you could test your credentials was to create a test file for EFT and see if it uploaded or not, or if you got an error message. We've now added to EFT banks the test upload button, and it uploads a test file so you can check your credentials at the time of configuring the EFT bank. In EFT, either in the web screens or in the desktop screens in EFT banks, you can configure that the output destination is either a directory or could be SFTP with password or SFTP with key file. And when we fill in the host address, the user ID and password, or the user and key file, depending which way you're connecting, you can then click on the test SFTP file. And in this case, we're getting an error message. So there must be something wrong with my credentials or the path that I'm addressing on the SFTP server. And the errors are logged in this file. And in this case, we can see that the directory is invalid. There is no path on the SFTP called C ORCID EFT files AP payments. So if I just change my path to the root of the SFTP site, assuming I have access to do that, and then I can try uploading again, and the file has been uploaded. And now if we go and create an EFT file for the FC bank where the output destination is SFTP and the folder on the FTP site is EFT files, so filtering on my batches for the FC bank, we'll choose batch 47 to 47. and create the EFT file. So the EFT file was created with five entries and uploaded to the FTP site. And accessing the FTP site, we see the file ap47.rbc on the FTP site, along with the test file eft.txt that we uploaded earlier. And as you'd expect, we have that same functionality on the desktop screens too. The error message is in the local directory for the user. Files uploaded. And if we go to the FTP site, we see the file there too. And the last new feature we have is to do with EFT clearing banks. But to give you a quick recap on the functionality of EFT clearing banks, 
it allows you to have different bank configurations for the same bank account. The EFT Clearing Bank account is a bank account created in Common Services and in EFT is linked to the real bank account. And when you post an AP payment batch against a clearing bank account, EFT Processing will automatically do a bank transfer from the real bank account to the clearing bank account to zero out the EFT clearing bank account. So it will always be zero. And then you will have the detailed payments on your clearing bank account and a single withdrawal from your real bank account, which should match to your bank rec if your bank rec shows a single withdrawal for EFT files. But it also allows you then to have different defaults on the EFT clearing bank account. For example, you might need a different EFT file format for different types of payments, or you might have a different destination. You may want to SFTP your international payments, but you upload manually your domestic payments. So you can have these defaults on your EFT clearing bank accounts, all linked to the real bank account. So the single withdrawal always comes from your real bank account, but the EFT clearing bank account is configured for the way you need to process that particular payment batch. And the new feature is to allow the auto transfer numbering to be determined. Prior to this uh, release, the transfer was always the next bank transfer number auto allocated from Common Services banks, but now you can choose to use the source AP batch number. So you've got a batch number to reconcile against. In Common Services banks, you create yourself a clearing bank account. And then in EFT banks, you configure that clearing bank account. So we've said that the EFT clearing bank account is a clearing bank account for CCB. And we want to use the AP batch number for our automatically created bank transfer, not the next bank transfer number, which is your other option. And then you can fill in all the preferences for your AP payments on this EFT clearing bank account, which may be different. You may be creating files in different folders or SFTPing to different folders than your settings for CCB. And then you create your payment batch against the EFT clearing account and go ahead and post it. And when posted, EFT automatically transfers the total payment batch from the real bank account, CCB, to the clearing account which will result in the two payments being shown in detail on the EFT Clear Bank Rec and the transfer from the EFT Bank Account CCB with the reference number 57, which was the batch number, and the Bank Rec being zero for EFT Clear. And similarly for the Bank Rec for CCB, the real bank account, we will see the same transfer 57, which was the batch number being posted in the EFT clearing account for the total withdrawal amount. Thank you, Anne, for this presentation on new features in EFT processing. Next, we're going to look at a very common questions regarding EFT setup on configuring email in EFT. And this actually applies to other ORCID modules as well. When configuring SMTP in EFT options to um, use this configuration to email remittance advice, we're often asked whether EFT processing supports multi-factor authentication. This is particularly relevant for Office 365 and Gmail. So while EFT processing emailing does not directly support multi-factor authentication, you do not need to turn it off to be able to use SMTP features. If you enable multi-factor authentication, you need to set up an app password for your user in Office 365 or in Gmail. 
And to support this in the latest version of EFT processing, we've actually made the password field in EFT options longer. So it is now 100 character long and therefore can support longer app password depending on where your email is configured. The other common questions regarding emailing is can you, um, does EFT processing support Sage 300 multiple contact? At the moment, only RMA supports multiple contacts since, um, October this year. So with the release of 2022, we've added support for multiple contacts in version 2020, 21 and 22 for RMA. It is currently not available for EFT processing. However, you can add multiple email addresses when you use EFT vendor and customer email and you need to separate the email address with a semicolon. And that field is 250 character long so you, that can actually support quite a few email addresses. To configure email, SMTP email, in many cases you need to add the port in the server name. So there is no specific field to add the port in the EFT option screen, but you add it after the server name separated by a column. For example, smtp.office365.com colon 587. Emailing uses the send email exe, so you need to make sure that your firewall and your antivirus don't block that program on the workstation or on the server that is used to email. Some SMTP servers have a limit per minute or per session, so we will look at how to configure that. And as mentioned before, if you enable multi-factor authentication, you need to configure an app password in your Office 365, logged in as the user. And then you still use the same username that you want to use, but instead of putting your regular password, you use the app password that you've used for EFT. To configure an app password, you need to log on to Microsoft Office 365 as the user you want to use. In this case, test.orchid, test at orchid.systems. If multi-factor authentication is enabled, and if it's the first time you log on to this machine, you will receive a verification code on your phone and you need to enter the code, depending on how your MFA is configured. Then you can um, go into your account details, choose view account. Security info. And you can see the app passwords you've created or create a new one by choosing add method, choosing the app password option, give it a name. That name is only for reference view within Office 365. You don't need to use that name in setting up the email using app password. Then Office 365 generates a password that you can copy to the clipboard and use. When you're done, you can see that it's there. And if you don't want to use it anymore, you can then come in here and delete it. So now we can go in EFT Processing, EFT Setup, Options and configure our SMTP details on the AP email tab. I'm going to set it up using Office 365. So I'm going to put smtp.office365.com and I'm going to add the port colon 587, my user. And in the password, I'm going to paste the password that Microsoft created when I created an app password to use in EFT email. Many SMTP servers require you to set up an encryption as TLS 
And we're often asked, what is the version of TLS that EFT supports? Basically, we use the .NET SMTP client to send the emails. So it uses whatever the operating system thinks is the best protocol to use. And it currently supports TLS 1.2 and 1.3. The email comes from with Office 365. should be the same as the user that, that you use for authentication. You can set up a CC and a BCC, so that makes sure that the accounts team will receive a copy of all the email notifications and remittance advice that are sent. Some SMTP servers have a limit sending emails, either by minute or by session. Generally, with Office 365, it is by minute. It is 30 emails by minute and you would really need this if you have batches with large number of entries and you are going to send you know quite a few emails in one go so in this example i'm going to set it up like this and i can use it to send a test email once i get confirmation that the email is sent I need to log into my mailbox to make sure I've received it. And then I can save the details and I'm ready to send emails from EFT processing. And you have similar configuration if you want to use different details in uh, when sending AR advices or if you're using payroll as well for sending payroll advices. As you've probably seen in previous webinars, you can use Extender to further enhance EFT's functionality. As we've seen earlier, Extender is used to support the EFT web screens. In the latest product update of EFT, you can install the EFT.VR Extender module to enable drill down from AP and AR screens to EFT screens. And for this, all you need is EFT processing and extender developer and we will demonstrate this shortly. You can also use extender to log changes to EFT banks and EFT options that are not logged out of the box in EFT processing so you can further enhance the extensive logging features that are part of EFT. We've also demonstrated recently how you can use Extender Alerts and Workflow to approve changes to EFT vendor and customer bank details. Similarly, you can use Extender to approve the creation of EFT file and there are separate resources videos on the ORCID website and you can watch those presentations separately. Another initiative this year is the launch of the Extender Marketplace with details on Extender modules available to customize Sage 300. So now I will hand over to Anne to demonstrate the EFT drill down app. The EFT.VI module is available with EFT processing if you have Extender and it adds buttons to the AR and AP screens to open related EFT processing screens. Over to you Anne. If you have both Extender and EFT, you are able to use the Drill to EFT Screens app for Extender, which enables you to drill from AR and AP screens through to the associated EFT screen. If you have both EFT Processing and Extender Developer Edition activated in the same company database, you can import the EFT module into Extender After importing this module, you need to reopen the Sage 300 desktop. And you will find that on your vendor screen, you have a new button which links you from the AP vendor screen to the EFT vendor screen.
on the AP Payment Batch List. You are able to create the EFT file from the Payment Batch List. From AR Customers. You have a new EFT button which links you through to the EFT customer record. And from the AR receipt batch list, you are able to create the EFT file. These extra buttons on the AP Vendor, AR Customer, AP Payment Batch List and AR Receipt Batch List save you time in navigating to the corresponding EFT screen and rekeying the key value. For more information on the Extender Marketplace and other apps on the Marketplace, please go to our website to the product page Extender Marketplace on orchid.systems. Thanks, Anne. You can find other examples of Extendo apps relating to EFT processing and other Sage 300 modules on the ORCID website. Many Sage 300 users use both EFT processing and document management link. So we will show you some DML configurations that support EFT processing. First, we will look at viewing documents linked to AP invoices applied to a payment when creating the EFT file and this is also documented in the Knowledge Base article. We will then show you some examples using SharePoint for EFT customer documents such as direct debit agreements and EFT vendors. And a reminder that if you use SharePoint with Office 365 and multi-factor authentication, the users need to create an app password to configure the document management link and the tray, similar to what we have looked at in the emailing section. We've also added in the most recent product update the ability to rename files when adding them to SharePoint, similar to what you are used to with DML and Network Folder. Finally, we will look at an example of saving a payslip when using EFT Payroll and saving them in one folder per company using Org ID in the file path, which is also a new feature added to DML in 2021. Over to you, Anne, for the demonstration. Using EFT processing in conjunction with Document Management Link allows you to view source documents at the appropriate time during the EFT processes. For example, when creating an EFT file, it may be relevant to view the original source documents that are being paid in this particular AP payment batch. So by configuring document management link for AP payment batch, we now have access to the individual documents for all the applied payments. And double clicking on the associated document will open the default program associated with that file type, in this case with the PDF. And this particular configuration is done by this configuration row in Information Manager Options on the Notes and DML hotkey tab. It associates with the AP payment entry, which is AP 3100. It associates the document number shown in the grid and the vendor number and links it through to the document number slash vendor number combination in this case stored on a network folder. And this network folder could be a mapped drive to Google Drive, OneDrive or Dropbox, or as in this case, it's to the C drive on this particular machine. But on the network, it would be to a UNC path. Another example of using document management link with EFT processing is in the setup process. When creating your EFT customers, you may want to associate the original approval from the EFT customer that you are allowed to direct debit their bank accounts 
and you may want to associate both the approval plus the bank account details with the EFT customers. And looking at this in conjunction with the configuration row in Information Manager Options, the EFT customer screen, which is EL1022, is configured to show around the customer number the documents that are in the SharePoint site in this particular folder and with this particular filter. And similarly in EFT vendors, we have configured document management link to show the EFT vendor documentation from SharePoint 2. So these are the bank account details provided by the vendors for their EFT payments. And looking at the configuration row from Information Manager Options, this particular configuration for your EFT vendors, which is EL1023, you have a configuration for the vendor number field and it is showing the documents which are in SharePoint in this particular folder with this applied filter. And finally, using document management link with EFT processing allows you to keep a history of the pay slips associated with the employee. And when you double click on January, in this case, as pay slip, if you are using EFT processing to password protect the pay slip, you would be prompted with the password before you can open the file. And looking at the configuration in IM options on the notes and DML tab, we can see that the configuration is done for the EFT employee screen, EL1064, and that it is showing all the documents in the folder, C ORCID, payslips, org ID, and then value. So org ID, you can dynamically create folders based on the company that you're running the payroll from. So in this case, the directory would be org LTD and the folder below the company ID would be the employee ID. Thank you, Anne. So in summary, we've looked at the changes to the EFT installer and how to create a 30-day trial code on the EFT license screen. And this is also where you enter new codes when a subscription is renewed. We've touched on the online help for EFT processing and other ORCID modules. We've discussed upgrade tips when upgrading to 2022 and other versions, in particular in relation to EFT formats. We've looked at what is required to set up the uh, EFT web screens. And we have then focused on the new features in EFT processing version 2019 and above. The ability to recreate an EFT file, details on how to configure Clearing Bank, and how to um, set up, test, and use creating EFT file using SFTP. We've looked at how to set up email SMTP details in EFT processing when using multi-factor authentication. And we have looked at how to use EFT ideas on how to use EFT processing with extender and document management link. So now is time for Q&A. Thank you. First question is, um, after upgrading to version 2022, do users automatically have access to the new security group to recreate EFT file? That's a good question. When you upgrade to version 2022 or indeed imply the latest product update of the previous versions, previous supported versions as well, because we included that feature there too, um, people will no longer be able to recreate a, a file unless you go into the security groups and assign this new security group for everyone. So it's by default, it is turned off. So for example, if, if somebody's in the group who's got all access, 
you need to select this recreate EFT file so that they can um, recreate an EFT file. Or you might want to create yourself a group where um, they can do pretty much everything except recreate a file. And this is the group that I was I showed you, you know, Anne's linked to this group and could not recreate a file. So on applying uh, version 2022 or uh, applying the latest product update, you need to go and grant those people who need the ability to recreate the file um, in order to for them to be able to do that. Thank you. Next question. Can you um, pay vendors in uh, different currencies and how can you enter all the bank details for a vendor if you have uh, for vendors if you have different um, formats for domestic payments and international payments for example okay um, can you pay vendors in different currencies yes you can so you just create the ap payment batch in the currency that you want and then create the eft file off that batch um, so you know, if your vendor needs USA currency or needs CAD or AUD, then uh, the payment batch must be in the currency that you want to make the payment. And then when you click create EFT file, that's what will be sent to the bank. So it presupposes that your bank will accept payments from you via EFT in different, or, you know, make payments for you in different currencies. So you need to make sure that you've got a bank account and a service from the bank that will do that. Um, how can you have different bank account details for the vendors? So um, typically what we would recommend for different bank account details for vendors is to enter, um, for example, if I pay a vendor 1200, it's going to use this RBC one um, and these bank account details. But if in my AP payment batch, I use the remit to PO box for vendor 1200, it's now going to use the Royal Bank of Canada. So if you're paying with the same file format, uh, you know, to different bank accounts for a vendor, remit to is the way to keep track of that. But if you need to sometimes pay vendor 1200 um, in US dollars to bank account ABC, and sometimes, and maybe that's an overseas payment for you, um, and sometimes in um, AUD, let's say, so it's a local payment, then what what is better to have is, um, uh, oh, let me just take a backward step. These fields that you see here are controlled by your main bank account that you configure in EFT setup options on the primary bank tab. So my primary format in this database is the USA Natcha self-balanced file. So I am by default seeing those parameters on my EFT vendors. So Natcha, uh, USA bank accounts, they talk about the branch number being the RT number or the RAT number, and they need to know uh, whether um, the, the, um, pay, the account that you're paying into is a deposit, uh, a checking account or a saving account. So if I needed to pay vendor 1200, both to the local routing number, but also overseas, so I'm going to have an IBAN number and a SWIFT number, the best thing to do is to have a user formats, which defines all the variables against the vendor for you. So, you, so you're able to enter 1200, then you'd fill in the routing number for PO box, because I'm going to use that for my local payments. And when I don't uh, specify a remit to code, then I'll fill in IBAN and SWIFT code, because that's what I'm going to use for my overseas payments. So that's probably the best way uh, to deal with that. You can link it to file type, but we don't really recommend that, because that's your file type, not uh, the um, the vendor itself. So if you change bank, you'd have to rekey all the vendor's bank account details. Thank you. Next question is, um, when using document management link and SharePoint, 
can you rename files like you can when you're using document management link with network folders? Uh, yes, you can. Um, so here's the configuration that I demoed a little earlier. And you can see against my vendor, I've got the banking account details and I've attached the MSG file. So I've got the vendor's email plus the attached document that the vendor sent me. And this has been stored in SharePoint. And I know that because it's got a title. So SharePoint, you're able to have titles for documents and we're able to display that back into uh, the DML uh, box. So you can see the file is called vendor underscore 1200 underscore bank account details so you know normally when you drag a, an msg file out of email it's normally given the name of the subject so the subject was not this when i dragged it out so yes you can change the uh, the file name when you're dragging into sharepoint and if i go to my information manager setup options uh, notes and DML extended tray, and we look for EL1023, which is our um, EFT vendor. You can see it's storing in SharePoint against my EFT vendor screen, and the vendor number is our variable called value, so that's 1200. And you can see when I renamed the file, it's the text vendor underscore, and then in brackets, value and then underscore and then bank account details dot ext to keep the original extension of the file that you're dragging in. So that's why it was called vendor underscore 1200 underscore bank account details dot msg. Um, and it was loaded up into this SharePoint site uh, folder or library. And this is the filter that we do to view that particular uh, document again. So yes, you can. It's the, the same syntax that you do for renaming files um, when you are dragging up to a network folder or a map network drive. Thank you. And just a reminder that this is actually a new feature in uh, Information Manager version 2019 and above. So if you can't find that feature, uh, check that you are running the latest product update. The rename file just for SharePoint. Yeah, it's been in the network folder for ages, but just for SharePoint, it came in in the latest product update. Can't see any more questions at this point. So thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. And um, thank you for your support over uh, this past year. We will speak to you again in um, January. Yes, have a great um, break. A compliments of the season to you all and we'll speak to you in the new year. Thanks. Bye.